Right, guys, welcome back. This is the Above Average FPL podcast. My name's Adam, and as always, I'm joined by Baker. How you doing, mate? Very well, mate. Thursday, got your have a day hat on. Masters it weekend. Is... Masters weekend. Um, yeah, we're loving that. We're <laughs> this is this is an FPL podcast, but we do love our golf, as uh, as as many know. But yeah, game week thirty three, team selection. What do we need to do? Look through the games. Go for our teams. We're going to do nothing at all to our teams, and then we're going to then we're going to move on. I was just looking at the top. About this time next week, we'll be sharing a beer in person. We will be sharing a beer. We will be sharing a couple of beers. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully. So the plan, the plan is, I'm going to leave here t- um, next Thursday at like five in the morning, and then I'm going to meet with Dan. So if you don't know Dan, Crypto Block Dan, he supports the podcast. Great guy, and he's coming down to the golf day with us. So I'm going to meet Dan at eleven after he finishes his run club. So good for him. And then, depending on the weather, we might. We'll drive down sort of almost in convoy and maybe catch nine holes um, before we get down to Newbury. And then we'll meet up with uh, a couple of the guys who are playing on Thursday. So a couple of the guys are playing on Thursday, getting a bit of course knowledge. And I I, I can't remember whether I paired them together. There's people playing on the Thursday at the course that we're playing our golf down the Friday. Yeah. Cheeky. Fucks. You think think I'm not going to play nine holes with Dan and strategize with him? (laughs) Oh, mate, we're going all in. Oh, my God. And you're playing with Jack. Oh, mate, Jack. <laughs> oh, I'm going to apologise to advance anybody who's watching this for, uh, in advance for our friend Jack next so week. If you've watched Full Swing, if you've watched the new series of Full Swing, he is like Wyndham Clark pre-therapy, basically. Yes. <laughs> and he's never going to become Wyndham Clark, Clark post-therapy. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Oh, um, yeah. But uh yeah, back to the back to the football. Um back to the football. So we've had a Champions League midweek. Yes. Good 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 games as well. Incredible games. Madness. Incredible games. No, I mean nothing come of it really. All the games are still in the balance. <laughs> well that's to be honest, that's 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 relevant, right? <laughs> that's relevant for us. We need to think about that. You know, Liverpool are playing right now. Salah and uh, Diaz have been benched, so or rested. And so, you know, Darwin starts. That's interesting for the weekend, yep. potentially. Um, obviously, Bradley's benched as well. So that's good for people that own him. Yep. Um, yeah. And obviously, as you say, like everything's in the balance now. So we don't know what, what Pep's going to do <laughs> at the weekend. Uh, nah. I, I'm, guessing, I'm guessing one thing we can, we can be sure of is he's going to rest Bernardo. I think that's probably... It's probably as good as you're going to get in it. Yeah. yeah. Bernardo will probably be rested. Um, Hold on. I've just been compared to a young Sam Allardyce. That's horrific. That's In incredible. the chat. That is terrible, man. That is terrible. I've seen, I've seen some young Sam Allardyce. He was quite a dashing young man. <laughs> okay, I'll take that then. But As a player, let's think of it as a player. Yeah, but I'm, I'm beyond it's playing bit, career age, chin. mate. I'm going to give it a bit on the chin more than anything else. Mm. Like, I don't think, uh, yeah... Fair enough. Um, it's, a, it's a good, strong chin, mate. Where, where were, where were we? Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I've gone way, I've gone way off. Then we we said before we started today that maybe we're starting to reach, you know, the 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 we're on the downward slope <laughs> to the end of the season. <laughs> we're getting to the end, and I feel like the professionalism might have gone a bit with it. Um, we Profe- have... this is, professionalism is not us, mate. We've never been, no, we've never not. been structured really. We just sort of muddle our way through. It's not. Um, so Liverpool, the thing with Liverpool is that they're playing on the Tuesday, on the Sunday, aren't they? So therefore is we're, we're not going to get anything that's going to help us. We're also not going to get a presser that's going to help us for Sunday. Yeah. Um, Cause you're only going to get the post game stuff, <clears throat> but you'd assume if you own Diaz, Bradley or um, Salah, you're golden. Um, then because even though they play Atalanta again on the Thursday, it's a, it's a good, good size break, isn't it? Yeah. Great size break. And you're not, and you're not maneuvering them for doubles anyway, right? Cause if you've got them in for doubles and they're in, so I don't yeah. think you really need to think about that, but I, I do see a lot of, you know, starting to get a bit worried because of <clears throat> Jota and Trent back in training and 
all of those type of stuff. It's reasonable. Um, it's reasonable, but you got to think that those two, that double game week, which is, you know, two games in a very short space of time, if he could, he wants to, I don't think he wants to flip-flop, flip-flop. If he could, he'd have, he'd like rest Mo on next Thursday and then go bang, bang. Mm. As we are saying this, Atalanta have just scored. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Good. So that's Salah starting next Thursday. <laughs> plans but, change? But, you know, plans can change um, on that one. I do think because of all we know, like Liverpool is a tough, tough one to bring in this week. But I think you've got them. You've got to play them, haven't you? Yeah. How do you feel about knowing this already about, let's just get straight into MoCap versus Harlan Cap. Well, I think I think being rested tonight. I mean, I guess if they go two 0 down, then maybe we'll just see Mo come on at half time or something like that. But you know, immediately based based on the midweeks, I mean, Salah feels obvious, and Salah v Palace. There's history there. There's all sorts of little yeah. things that 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 tweak that tweak in your mind. Plus, he's still getting a ton of chances. I mean, that said, I mean Harlan's still getting a ton of chances. He has the highest XG of all forwards over the last 10 weeks. Mm. Funnily enough, though, I looked at this and City, out of obviously they have the highest XG over the last 10 weeks, but they also, Haaland and, um, Haaland and Alvarez have a, a number one and two in the biggest underperformance in the last 10 weeks as well, which is mad. Um, they've underperformed to four and a half goals. Yeah. Which is a lot. For me, for me, like I think the easy place you start, Mo. I just I do think it is the easy place to start out. I feel like you gotta feel like the floor's pretty decent. You know, there's a very good chance of a clean. There's a very good chance that um, he returns in some form. Yeah, and you've got to think with Haaland that either there's a chance he doesn't play or he does play. But if they can take him off, surely they would. Surely they would, yeah. You know, is is is, uh, albeit it seems insane to me that we're not capping Harland home to Luton. Yeah, no, that's that's also fair. <clears throat> but again, you've got Luton. I mean, this is the thing. You, we say things like Luton have got a battle now; they've got to do this and that and the other. But also, City have to win every single game of the rest of the season. So, yeah. like, it's going to be a game. I think that you know, Pepper want to just hit really hard and get it done so that he can then pull players off, mm -hmm. as you say. Uh, the thing is, is like, I think maybe six months ago, we'd have said in that kind of situation, Haaland would have been key and we'd have expected, you know, say there was three goals, you'd expect two returns, yeah. you know, or whatever. Now, even, even in the last few weeks, since he's come back from injury as well, like City is still scoring goals and he's not as involved. As a percent, as a percentage of goal contribution, he's he's definitely nowhere near as involved. So, I think yeah. Walker's a, a a big thing in that as well. To be fair, though, mm. obviously Walker really stretches the teams, and then when you stretch the teams, Walker's not often the person doing the crosses, but because he's pulled the team apart, the, the opposition apart, when the when the when he cuts back, eventually the cross goes in. Harlan's got more more freedom at the moment it's all a bit it's all a bit blocked in why i think my default sits at mo this week is that i don't know what the lineup's going to be for city like they, it could very well be doku bob alvarez harland to front four yeah it could you know and, and say nunez and rodri in center midfield and it just plays rodri and harland as his main guys with all the others and it's all good. It's, yeah. It should be enough for the win. But I don't trust it as much. <laughs> um, and also it means there's more forwards on the pitch for the bonus. So Alvarez, we always know, you know, will help baseline Haaland. So therefore, if he does score, makes it more difficult. Even Bob and forward? I'm assuming Bob's a forward. I honestly have I no idea because I haven't considered him. I don't, I'm not and even we know that check. Doku's not, you know, particularly great for Haaland. So... If we got a leak that said Harlan starts and Foden starts and De Bruyne starts and all those type of stuff, then I'd be like, oh, well, this feels like a five or six nil 
maybe he's playing for this goal difference because there is an element that they do need to chase Arsenal's goal difference down. Yes. Um, but if it's Haaland plus it's not nine kids, goals, is it not? Is it like nine goals now? That's a lot of goals. I think maybe they just yeah, need but to... we're going to beat Arsenal five 0 so it's going to be okay. <laughs> There, there is that. We're going to be the first team in four months to have scored against Arsenal and win and yeah. score five. That's how it's that's how it's playing out. Plus forty versus plus fifty one. Yeah, eleven goals. Wow, at the moment, yeah, is the difference. So they do <laughs> they do need to go literally massive. They literally do need to go massive against it. Um, whereas, yeah, I just think regardless, I think that that Mo feels like ninety minutes. No, that's fair enough. No, that's fair enough. Um, oh, actually, before we go into the games, um, just a reminder for everyone that's watching the stream tonight. Thanks very much for being here. Really appreciate you being here. And if you do like what you're watching, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Let us know. And if you want to see more from us, then make sure you hit that subscribe. As Baker said, we are now heading into the, like the final stretch of the the season, so it's a little bit more difficult to get people to keep coming back to the content which is fine you know it's understandable people consume less content we are i don't want to say less motivated but it is you know it's getting to that point in the season where we're like really looking forward to june at the same time um yeah so yeah hit the buttons and then you know we can go again next season and once everything's sort of been been finished off and you know we can hit the hit the ground running next year that said you know obviously we're still putting out content this season twice a week and so, you know, come and support us. And that would be, we really, really appreciate it. And that is the best way to do it is just to click a couple of buttons, leave us a comment, let us know what you're doing this week. And um, we can move, now move to games because I've done the, uh, now I've done the formalities. Formalities are done. So as usual, we have the graphic from Rob T. FPL. Go check him out on X. And basically it just shows a... Uh, a projection of goals, expected goals uh, in each fixture, and also percentage of clean sh- percentage chance for clean sheets. Um, no surprises that City top this this week with a fifty two percent chance of a clean sheet, three point four expected goals. Um, if you haven't seen this graphic on every single FPL podcast you may have watched this week, then <laughs> then it's part of the furniture now, Rob. It, it, it is definitely. Furniture. Every single one of us is brilliant. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a few there's a few lopsided games here this week, and I think they're the ones that we need to be taking advantage of, even in view of. I get. I, I, mean, I guess the European stuff just balances them a little bit. It does a bit. It does a bit. There's goals in everything this week. That's that's probably you know all of the games this week. It looks like goals, which is how this season's playing out. But yeah, Liverpool, Arsenal, and City are the prime you know the only three we've got with uh, um well over two and a half xg that expected goals this week um city at the top at 3.4 liverpool at 2.85 and arsenal at 2.55 you know all with opposition that are expected to score less than one you know it's really interesting i mean it just shows how dominant arsenal's defense are that the team that is battling for fourth place are expected to score 0.83 goals at Arsenal this week. Yeah. They're they're expected That's... they're expected to score as many goals as Crystal Palace at Anfield. Yeah. <coughs> and less goals yeah, that... than Sheffield United at Brentford, who have that a just shows them. how absurd, how absurd this this defense is. It's um it's pretty impressive. It's pretty impressive. Um but yeah, it it, it all does scream that You'd look at captaincy amongst these ones. I think there's a few difficulties based on the midweek is the Saka and just Arsenal in general of can you trust any of it? I still don't think it's still the greatest fixture on earth, the Villa one. So I don't think I would captain anyone from that game. Um, I just don't think, I mean, as much as this says 2.55 to 0.83, it just doesn't feel like a high ceiling game at all. No, it feels like a really controlled 2-0 win. That's what it feels like. Max. And nothing with Saka. I mean, Saka feels like the only one you could go with. And, you know, for what everyone's saying, regardless, he's coming off every game limping at the moment. Like, he's being yeah. dragged through the mud to get through this season. Yeah. Like he is, They'll need him this weekend. <laughs> They'll need him this weekend because it's, it's, a, it's a big old game. But I do expect him to make a couple of changes. 
you know, I think someone like Smith Rowe comes in. I think Trossard, all those type of players, you know, can play. Sinchenko. I mean, he'll still, he'll Kiwi still roll out Havertz as well and stuff because, you know, the, yeah, yeah. he's not getting in as many, he hasn't had as many minutes at the start of the season. So he's obviously a lot fresher. Mm. Yeah. I mean, they've still got, they've still got plenty in the tank. They've got plenty in the tank. Um, and they'll be a little fresher than Villa who have played the same team that they played last weekend. They've rolled out tonight and then have got to play again on Sunday. Yeah. Um, I don't know how they're getting on at the moment. They're nil-nil at the moment, I guess. Nil-nil. Right now. Uh, no, one nil up, one nil up, Villa. Okay, cool. <clears throat> um, half time in both those games. Uh, yeah, cities is is great, but we're really, really reliant on leaks. Like if you, if if you've got Foden, you're, it's just gold if he's playing, isn't it? Like it, we've seen it with Foden, but if you if you've got a leak that f- you if you had Foden and you own Foden, and then the leak said that Harlem wasn't playing. Would you cap, cap Foden this week? I yeah. think you can. I think I'd still cap Salah, but I think you can. I think he's definitely mm. an option. And then you've obviously got the KDB, who was unwell in week in midweek, and then you're like, well, if he plays, <laughs> yeah, then he's then he's captain. An guess an option too. You know, is I say, again, I still prefer Salah. I prefer Salah over all of those options. I really do. Um, I think, yeah, I think a lot of people have already spoken a lot about all these guys. And I think, you know, most people are already prepped for that Liverpool 34 double mostly. Um, So, you know, you're probably sitting on three out of five from Bradley. Well, I say three out of five, probably three out of four. I'm throwing Van Dijk in here because I own him. Um, Salah, Diaz and Darwin, right? So there's pretty much your, your five. So you'd have three out of five from there already in place. Very surprising if you didn't have him in place ahead of this game. Um, I did I see just a comment I've asking. I've only got two. Okay. Are you planning on bringing another one in? Because I'll bring I'm... one in next week, but I'm not bringing one in this week. Okay. Yeah. But you've already, yeah, you've already free hit. So yeah, yeah that's, that's fine. Mm. Cause some people are, so there's some people that have, I got a question. There was a question earlier. Deirdre said, would I, would, would you buy Bradley for this week? Then free hit 34 and wildcard 35. I mean, if Ooh. you're going to free hit 34 wildcard 35, I think is I think you I think a punt would be better off in attack than defense. So, you know, I would go if you can like an Isak or a Tony or a Bumo for example this yeah. week. Like yeah. that like that would be fun. If you don't have Foden like and he gets and you get the start thing that he's going to start, get him in because if you're going to free hit while 34 wild card 35 then you're you're out of that player anyway. Um yeah. Diaz, if you haven't got him. Diaz, yeah, Diaz, great shout. But get really Havertz, like, you could, yeah, you could go Havertz in that in that game as well. Yeah, I just think there is still a chance that Havertz does miss out because there's options for it. Like you can play Jesus and 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 Trossard, like, yeah, okay. In those spots, you can do those things. Where I think you know what we've got is some known in we've got some known information that Diaz starts probably. You yeah. know, is I, I think it's a pretty safe bet. We'll get a bit more information around Tony and Bumo, you know, just latest fitness stuff, but you'd assume one of those two or both those two play. Um yeah. and then hopefully we'll get some form of leak on the city game. And then you've got some insight there. So yeah, if you're gonna take a punt, then I would do if it has to be a defensive punt. Yeah. If you haven't yeah. matched your arsenal, which seems again, that seems mad that you wouldn't have. Would you go Bradley? Over Reggie on this week on a one week punt for a defender. I probably wouldn't. I, I, I well, no, I probably wouldn't. I probably would go for, I'd probably go for a Reggie. Yeah. One week punt. I think if I, I think I had the choice of the game for a defender this week, Reggie on would be the boy. It's fun. As you say, if you, it, it, yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing that unless I've got free hit 34 and wildcard 35, though. 100%. 100%. I, think that's, 100%. I need to make need to make that clear. Um, <laughs> yeah. Are there any others outside of the, these these three big fixtures where there's um where you're thinking there might be an opportunity because I think Tony's a good cap option this week. Okay. It, it, uh, on paper. So we look at this thing here and we say, "Hey, it's playing Sheffield United. Their expected goals are 2.35. It's Tony, he's the talisman for this team." But we do then have to say he's blanked in seven games. 
<laughs> I think it's technically eight games if you add in the ten minutes that he played last week. So he's yeah, he's literally just blanking his way through. Um, Frank's told us he's got a hip issue, which is why he couldn't start all those games in a row. He's, so there's something that he's managing. Um, and that he thought that you know, but he did say he's really important. This you know, you know, he did then start saying he's a beast and does all those things. Um, but if you were really chasing, then I think Tony's the upside pick this week. And if somehow Tony is out, then Bumo is the upside pick. Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, Brentford have a worse XGC over the last 10 than Sheffield United. Did you know that? <laughs> Not surprised me at all. That's sensational. Villa but as we, well. Yeah. Burn, well, that's probably all us, actually. Burnley, Man U, and Luton. Yeah. So again, it's like I'm just. It's just on the. It's just making me think because every time we're targeting these big, these um, mm-hmm. these promoted sides, we've seen like we we've seen very well, little in the sense of massive hauls. Like Palmer yeah. got them all before everyone realised. I think that he was smashing it up, and I know somebody had tweeted that out. But yeah. it, I don't think it had filtered around to everyone when we realised he's just basically two years ago no. Mason Mount. And so, yeah, this is I the had game. no idea. If you're Brentford, this is the game that keeps them up. Win yeah, okay, this, that's fair. It's done. You know, it's not like this is a, a target. They're down there with them. As you said, the XGC is terrible. This is just a really, really... And now we'll, what we do know with Brentford is if somehow Sheffield United do score they'll just throw everything at them like we saw it even with the if, if the the villa one you know they can produce these free alls and do that you know um fun stuff can happen I, I like it i like it and if you've got him then it's a really really good um potential option you know i'm looking at if for example harland's not out harland's my obvious move this week and my initial thoughts are you go Mateta, because that's what everyone's done, and I mm. can bench him and play Garnacho. Because look, we got Man United here on one point seven expected goals, and I'm like, that's an okay way to Bournemouth, okay fixture, isn't it? Um, up against Adam Smith, you know, or Kirkes or wherever it is, it's it's not great it's not... in the in the fullbacks. Yeah. Um, but I'm then starting to think. Well, the other option is I could go Harland to Tony. Uh, and then, so I'm backing Tony over Garnacho this week, which I'm pretty comfortable with. And then Tony's away to Luton next week, as opposed to two games of Mateta. Um, and I don't think there's as much in it as it seems. Like, I think there is, you know, if I looked at who's got the big upside in these two games, Tony could go really big in these next two games. You'd like to hope, like if you own Tony, you'd like to hope that out of playing Sheffield United and Luton, that you're going to get some get some goals. Yeah, um, I, it's I hard mean, to it back just, someone in it when they're just, when they're seven just like nothing. They just had done nothing for so long. Mm. Yeah, and he's an really... unpredictable player. We've talked about him at times that he, he, he doesn't really know because he's where in stupid he's gonna... positions and because he doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't pick up traditional positions as a striker, and yeah. then you're almost relying on the penalties to support it, yeah. and they just not get him. Yeah, conveniently, it doesn't get penalties and suddenly he's a worse asset. Um, <laughs> Funny that. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. So it's that's that's on the back of my mind. But I'm like, it does. You feel like you'd feel like you you feel really stupid if you picked a single game week uh, for a punt this week and then he blanked. You'd be like, oh, I've, I've messed that up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's always that's always the way, though. Yeah, I think yeah. that's always the way. I just don't think. I mean, just just back yourself, and if it goes wrong, it goes wrong. I mean, like what's yeah. what... and quite a few people are going to have like wild cards out of it as well. And you're only punting if you've got a wild card. So yeah, I would also say I'll also say that I am not punting. <laughs> I'm not punting right now. Nah, um, I'm running out of weeks to punt, but I'm not punting right now. Bar that then. So yeah, I mean. Uh... Other our, games, well, our, our game, game with us, our game, just just us. just bench bench your defenders and play anybody you do have. Play Son, 
play Barnes, play Gordon, play Isak. Play Isak. Just, just play them all if you've got them. Because yeah. attackers, it's, it's a great game for attackers. This game, yeah, it's going to be a fun game to watch, and hopefully, we score one point nine five goals and win. Hopefully, yeah, that'd be nice. Keep them, keep them down to one point eight. Score our one point nine five. Perfect. Um, in terms of like Burnley Brighton, I'm hearing, I'm obviously seeing a lot of Jao Pedro crap over the timeline. I'm just like, I'm looking at it again. Okay, cool. Have have Jao Pedro Brighton a shit. So just if you want them, if you want him, just just have him. It's fine. It's the, it's the Brighton are dull now. That's that's they, the issue to, actually. Yeah, and it used to be like two point five to three xg. You used to, they used to just smash teams around, just create loads and loads of chances. It used to be fun to watch. It used to be fun to talk about. And now it's just it, you're right. It's just dull. It's crap. And yeah. I don't know. It's, I think it's definitely rooting from Deserby as well more than anything. Like yeah. he's just stinking it up. So yeah, if you want to pick Jao I mean, Pedro, go ahead, but don't blame us or don't blame me. I, I uh, think when you're, you're, you know, Matoma is such a good one-on-one specialist that when you lose him, you're like, oh, wh- wh- what do I do? <laughs> what do I do there? Yeah. You know, is is it, it's it, it makes everything so much more difficult, and it makes everything so much easier when you have him in your team, and uh, it's. Um, the games are not as fun as they were. Um, but I see it. And I think the only thing with the Jao Pedro one is what else does it give you? So if you go there, what else do you get for it? Because he's so cheap. And that's that's how you can console yourself that that's the way to do it. But yeah, I, I just yeah. see so much more rotation for him. Um, and I think, you know, yeah, I, I just... I, I, I just, it's really hard to think that teams are going to be nailed. Any team's going to be nailed. But when teams that rotate a lot already, then also don't have particularly a huge amount to play for, it stinks of rotation to me. Yeah, I, yeah, it does. I'm just trying to think what other players in that. The, the, the problem is that there, there are no other strikers in that price bracket that double in 37. There's no one anywhere near it. I mean... I'd probably almost rather have Chris Wood this week. Chris Wood this week. I mean, Chris Wood this week is fine. Obviously, he's playing. Obviously, he's he's scoring goals. He's on yeah. form, etc. Um, but outside of this week, I mean, outside of the thirty six and thirty eight look okay, but they're both away games. Yeah. Again, wild card in. Wild card, free hit 34, wild card 35, maybe. I mean, you could have him for a couple of weeks if you wanted. But again, like, wouldn't you just go, wouldn't you just go Hoyland instead? Yeah. Like, as much as, as the problem in being is, is that, man, you have had a couple of games where they've just been terrible. And it's really hard to take stuff when they, when they play a team like Liverpool. It's so difficult. It's so hard. It's It's all this fixtures breed form crap, right? You need to, you need to trust that. And you need to believe that those, you know, getting a good fixture like a Bournemouth away, which is a it's a fine fixture, Sheffield United at home and a Burnley at home are going to be games where, you know, confidence is built and the team start doing better stuff. Hoyland should be perfect. He Former should, Sheffield United, should be. Burnley. He should, should be. be. You still always think there's also the numbers. You know, Garnacho seems the most nailed of their attack. You know, now but then he's, he's still subject to come, he's still subject to getting slung off for Anthony. He is. This is the problem. He is. But you still have Anthony and you have Rashford and you have Hoyland and you're like, well, Rashford can play that role and he can do that role and they can do that. And suddenly it's like the Hoyland's not that now himself. Um something. And when he looks down, like I just feel like he looks I don't think he's been helped by the brain. His, his his hair does not stand up to the rain. Like he just got <laughs> plastered and it makes him look like mis- You know what I mean? Like you want this striker, you want the striker to be like this strutting peacock of a player, and he's not that player. And that that somehow, you know, I just I, I can't I can't get my head around it. You know, I'm looking at him for me again for 35 wild card, but He's going to need to. Sh- I'd, I'd like to see what he does in the Bournemouth for Sheffield United games. To, I think, man, you just need to do more as well. They, yeah, it's weird because you kind of need those two games for to the, for them to prove something, but you also want them for those two games because they're the best two games possible. 
So yeah. it is kind of a leap of faith. And I think maybe if yeah. you want to lean into your Man United friends rather than asking us about it, it might be better. So I don't I don't know whether like people like LR and uh, Praz are, are buoyant and optimistic on those guys. I don't know. I'm not sure they're that optimistic at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, uh, Raptors just come in and said hi everyone. Foden injured, which I which obviously did come off. Foden injured. Does that mean we've now got some news out? Is that is that news? Because because we we came and Salah's on, but we 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 knew he came off injured in the Champions League, right? Oh, he, oh. wow! Has it been confirmed? I don't know. Is now. this the real Foden? Ross, can you try and prove to us somehow that you are the real Foden? Real, real <laughs> is this the real Foden? Is this the real raptor? <laughs> yeah. This is not just some fake raptor, some fake dinosaur trying to pretend. Well, well, well. He hasn't got one of those, yeah. he hasn't got one of those ticks that Harry's got. <laughs> I don't know whether, I, I don't know how you is. get one of those ticks. It could yeah, be a fake egg. Love you really, is. Ross. Oh, I just clicked his thing and said this channel does not exist. So I reckon that's not our real raptor. <laughs> Is that really go to channel? Has that really just happened? It's a fake raptor. We got fake. Incredible. Raptors. We got fake. Oh, amazing. That's the best thing ever. It's only great if it's if it's Buddha. <laughs> <laughs> that would be hilarious. Uh, uh, fake raptor. Don't just clip that part and put it. Put put the raptor said he's injured part. Only. Otherwise, Ross will get absolutely hammered tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Do not do that. Um, yeah. Um, um, where were we? Uh, okay, so we've we've kind of spoken about we've spoken about Newcastle and Tottenham players. We've spoken about Brentford, Sheffield United, Born, Burnley, Brighton covered. Obviously, the big three teams there covered. Forest, we said Chris Wood, and then moved on, which is absolutely fine with me. Uh, Bournemouth United. Let's tackle the last two games: uh, West Ham and Fulham, and Chelsea and Everton. Um, do you play? Your Chelsea defender this week. Here, yeah. let me give you a let me give a conundrum. Go on, in. um, assuming Harlem plays, yeah, then my obvious move this week is Poro to eight Nori. I've got to keep reminding myself you have wild card. Yeah, so Poro to eight Nori. Yeah. Yep. Would you start eight? I'm starting both my Arsenal defenders. Of course. So do I then start? Eight Nori, or do I start Gusto? Uh, well, I mean, both injury risks, I guess. Both yep. good attacking players. Eight Nori basically plays like number 10. Wherever he wants. Wherever the hell he wants. Away to Forest. Away to Forest. Chelsea at home. Oh, I don't know, man. That's... That's probably close. That's probably closer than it needs to be. I think just flip a coin and then and then go with what it says. Yeah. Because I don't think it really I matters. Think... I think when we talk about when we talk about flips like this, I mean, you know, it it could eat very easily be two two, and then it could also be twelve one, right? And so yeah. either way, so you know, you sort of damned if you do, damned if you don't. There's no real justification to go one or the other. I guess I'd probably go eight Nori just and that's probably because i feel like i just feel like i, I don't know i just feel like gary o'neill still wants them to play that's a bit of fun yeah i still feel like that's where the fun's yeah. going to come from and pochettino's boring the hell out of me like yeah like it's, it's that sheffield united game where they just created absolutely nothing and i just can't it's, it's quite nice having monday night action though isn't it it's quite nice having a late one in the monday night game um, but didn't didn't we didn't we say that like Mondays are normally terrible? Yeah, yeah, they are terrible. Yeah, cool. <laughs> but it, it's but a weird one. Isn't Everton it? have you... Everton have Calvert Lewin and just can't go, can't score goals. Making a transfer where you're like, I don't know if I should play him or not. It's it that that's that's the bit that's really icky about this week for me. I mean, would you play? So it's let's let's put it back to you then. So would you if you took out Poro and played eight Nori? Okay, I suppose yeah, eight Nori plays in the double, doesn't he? So. So yeah. what what are your other options in terms of double thirty four? Um, so yeah. is there a better option for than eight Nori? So is 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 a Tarko Branf Mikalenko better than eight Nori in the double? 
is yeah is Munoz I don't know than I was double? Just, maybe see when you mentioned like Region right so would you so like is Region over those next two games better even though they've even though they've only got one game in thirty four is the Luton fixture good enough because they're the worst team in the league yeah if you discount. You know, it like like if you discount the fact it, that Brentford's defense is actually worse than Sheffield United's, yeah, it's because <laughs> because Wolves have got to play Arsenal, like yeah, but but you are looking at the home Bournemouth game and thinking, oh, that's nice. If so, he plays it, if he plays it, he so plays does Region, it. So does, let's go back to Region as an example. Does Region against away at Luton score? Get, does he get an assist more than Eight Nori against Bournemouth? Because I'm just counting eight Nori as two points against Arsenal. Yeah, it's a difficult yeah. it's a difficult one because I'm just obviously yeah the the extra two points for the appearance. I don't know. I think only it, if they don't as a two points if they don't concede two goals. Well, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and Arsenal and Arsenal are just battering teams, right? So it yeah. could quite easily be. Oh yeah. Two nil, three nil, four nil gets booked, and he's on minus one. <laughs> Could easily win. I would love that because I'm not going eight Nori. Yeah. So yeah, I've still got some thinking to try and think. What's this? Either defensive punt or the striker punt. Feels weird when you've only got to make certain, not many transfers to make a transfer to sit them on your bench. Yeah. Feels weird. You want to it be does. a bit more aggressive. It's that. a. It is a bit. It's a bit odd part of the season. I mean, like I've seen as well some people on wild card that were wild carded in like thirty and thirty one. You know, are in that position where they just don't really want to make transfers now, and they're like any transfer for this week is actually not really a transfer for this week, but it's for a future mm. week, and they're only really using it because almost some well, of them as well because some of them because people are free hitting in thirty four. So you know, you need yeah. to prepare for thirty five onwards. There's people going in with two free transfers this week, and they're like, yeah. I've got to use them now. For players in two weeks' time, and that's it's tough. It's really tough. Tough man. Anyway, that's what we're doing. What are we doing? We're going to our teams. I was just I was just messaging Ross there. I was going to message Ross and say, "What are you doing, spreading crap you. on our channel?" <laughs> no, I was going. <laughs> I was going to tell him we had a fake Ross. Fake Ross. Um, you or me? You, mate. Give us your stuff. Okay, so I uh, at the moment I have Raya in goal. Gabriel, Gvardiol, Gusto and Virgil van Dijk at the back. Um, Madison, Palmer, Salah captain and Saka. And then Darwin and Haaland. Um, current bench is Solanke, Garnacho, Richards and Neto. Difficult decisions here are around, like you mentioned Gusto, so could... Should I play Solanke over Gusto? Should I play Solanke over um, like Madison, for example? Just because I feel like the Madison move is a, you know, it's like a, I just feel like he's not a good pick anymore. So do yeah. I, do I, do I, is, is basically it. Do I really want him? No. Do I want him to do well this weekend? Yes, absolutely. Like I want a piece of that fun and I just hope that it happens this weekend. And yeah. I'd much rather hope for that than have maybe a Solanke or a Gusto. I don't know. Um, Garnacho is the weird one as well because, like, I've got like they could all start. Like, yeah, like they're, they're all might, good enough to start. Pep might help you, so we might get some information that Pep helps us. Anyway, so we if, might get, you know, Vardy might not play, Harlem might not play, <clears throat> so that might that might solve. Solve your issues right there. Yeah, Swap and I guess I guess and... I can't do the I can't do the selling of Haaland, unfortunately. No, as much as I'd love to. Madness. I say it's um, madness. I'm eight hundred and fifty k. So like, is it? Is it madness? Oh well, yeah, it probably is mad. <laughs> um, but Tigers just loaded the first. I, by the way, I would play Solanke over Gusto. Okay, forward over defender. Did you hear what I said? I said, I heard you say it, Tiger, Tiger Birdie. Let's get our teams done. Let's get go watch Tiger. <laughs> um, yeah, I would play Solanke over Gusto all day long. Um, this week, the Maddo one. It's a really tricky call for people. It's a really, hey, no one really him. tricky call. No one knows. Um, there's still, there's still, still a few, still a few. Um, 
and you know we believe in the player like we this hope that we hope because it's really vital to Tottenham that Maddo gets back to being Maddo um but something's just not been right um but what you do know is after this weekend he's got two weeks off yeah. He's got two weeks off and Tottenham have never had it where it's like, it's two weeks off with no one going away on international breaks. It's just two weeks for Ange to prep for these horrendous runner games. But we did have, we had that in game week 26. We didn't quite have that. We had like a weird spell with it, didn't we? It was, it was, but at the, the time it was like immediately like Poro and destiny got injured. Like they're coming back. They were supposed to be back yeah. from injury. And then they both just got but injured. Got, it, and they weren't the only ones injured though. We had lots of other people injured. We actually don't have anyone injured, injured right now. Mad. So, I mean, I don't think I'm going to be making any moves this week. I think it will be a firm role. I yeah. mean, the players are good enough. The difficulty comes next week when I've got two free transfers and to be honest, I might only even need to make one mm. because I would obviously ben- I'm obviously benching Madison Palmer Gusto um, that week. Obviously, Spurs yeah. don't play Palmer Gusto; mm-hmm. both play Arsenal. And then everyone, I've got obviously three doublers with. Uh, sorry, I've got six doublers plus Haaland, Vardiol, and Solanke, seven doublers. Eight doublers with Neto. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, I'm, I'm just, only going to play one keeper. Richards is a funny he, one. He can't win every week, but it, the more you try and win next week, the harder it is for you to win 35, 36, 37, 38, and that, you know what I mean? Yeah, and so, so you, I think I just have to accept what I've got and then... And hope for the singlers to go big, you know, so playing Haaland and Nacho next week. Mm-hmm could be fantastic you know is yeah. is like that's yeah is what it is i mean do do i have like i mean it does having two transfers next week maybe as well makes me think do i want do i need saka do i do i go to odegaard or do i you know could, have you got be, any money could in the bank? be a move have i got any money on a bank it's a fantastic question point two i think off the top of my head point two you can't do maddo to Foden. no 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 i'm point two short I mm. think is what I what I checked last time I saw it. Just in case. Um yeah, what would two. you do? Well, I suppose as well, even if you got let's say we got a leak that said that Maddo wasn't because you know we're the first game. What if we got a leak that said Maddo's not in the eleven? Um then I'd probably just bench him. Because it's like Nacho at Bournemouth, when I'm not playing my Bournemouth keeper, is fine. And then Solanke against United when I've mm-hmm. got no United other players, it's fine. So I probably just don't do anything. Yeah. To be honest. Because although we, although weirdly, when we get to 35, like Madison's not the Tottenham player I want. Like I would much That's rather just saying. have Sun. So Madison could be. I don't know. Who could who could he be for the next two weeks? I mean, what what makes sense? I'm just now scrambling for a fixture ticker. You can um, even you could even chase the Bumo train. You could chase, yeah, just Sheffield United, Luton, and then Everton, Fulham, Bournemouth, Newcastle. Yeah, yeah, but then I'd have to change him back. I'd have to change Bumo back to Son somewhere. And no, because I'd still have to do that with Saka, and I'd have to and I'd have to do I'd have to take money out of my forward line, which means I'm probably buying João Pedro, which I don't want to do. Oh, fun on the. Let me give you an update on Europa, which is only useful for you, not anybody watching this. <laughs> they <Nobody laughs> can't back in it. But um, on at half time, Mo came on. Yes. Sobersly on, Robertson on. Diaz has just come on for Darwin at and, 60. And now they're 2 0 down. And now they're 2 0 down. Yeah. So maybe he just bins it. Maybe maybe he does just spin it. Maybe he does just spin it. Maybe he just bins it. We will see. Let's move on not to your team. Old, we were trying to get in and out. Not good for the old coefficient, is it? Not good for the old coefficient. No, 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 it isn't. 
It isn't. Um, we said in and out in 30 minutes. We've been live for 47, so we're doing well. We do, we do. So, similar to you, I've got 13 players that, well, 14 players, actually, that I wouldn't be upset with playing this week. I've got Neto in goal. That could be Ariola in goal. I'll wait and see if Ariola's fit. Um, even then, I'm like, mm, I don't know. Neto gets a lot of saves. If he does clean, he's definitely getting a double digit this week. Maybe roll the dice on it. Um, and then Gusto, Gabriel and Saliba is my current back three. Saliba, oh, sorry, Saka, Salah, Palmer, Son in midfield. Yep. Very happy with that. Uh, Harlan, Solanke, Darwin. Happy with that. Then I've got Garnacho and Porro. It's my first two on the bench. Would be happy to play for those. But I've got two free transfers and I need to use one this week um, to set myself up for next week. So, uh, as I said, my two things are either Porro, probably to eight Nori, and then make a decision on whether I play eight Nori or Gusto. Um, and then if Harlem was out, I would do Harland either to Tony, and it means I'd have one less doubler in 34, or it would be Harland to Mateta, and then full steam ahead for... Because if I did Harland to Mateta then I'd have two free transfers to use next week, which I would use on two more doublers. Um, and then I'd play Garnacho, home to Sheffield United, as my only single game week. And then wildcard 35. And then wildcard 35. Cool. So, yeah, defender decision or a Haaland decision. Seems pretty straightforward, to be honest. It doesn't, so. it doesn't, it's not it's not overly complex for you to be honest because you no. you've got the wild card in 35 you're just like well I'll just move this for this and this for this next week and you know I'm actually you... quite annoyed that it's not complex because I, I feel like I've been like up against struggling like not had a team in a good place this is the first time I feel like my team's in a like nice steady place yeah can roll and do stuff well it's near the end of the season I've got a wild card <laughs> you know so I'm like should I have wild carded earlier and been more aggressive with it and then that or you know does it how does it play out but I think hope. you are I'm... in a perfectly good position mate yeah yeah I guess that there's there's uh, I did start thinking about well is there another world where I try and start moving towards the bench boost for example um, but I don't think so I don't think so. I don't think with two Tottenham and two Chelsea, it would in my team. Bench no, boost no, is the no, way. No. Just uh, no, ignore ignore the bench boost for until after the wild yeah. card. Yeah. Sweet. Well, we are yeah. there. Game week thirty three coming up. So, again, just a reminder about what's going to happen over the next seven days. I guess seven or eight days, um, because as we've mentioned many times. Uh, you know, obviously we've got the golf day next week. That does mean we'll pod on Sunday this week or Monday. Yes. No, Monday. No, Monday, mate. Masters. Monday. 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 So pod on Monday and then we will do, we will try. No, we will do something on Saturday morning. Um, Live from the hotel after the night before, which could be chaotic. We will also be posting loads of stuff on socials and stuff from the golf day as well. So uh, you will have missed yeah. out and you can come to one in the future, but we're going to show you how much you've missed out by just sharing absolutely everything from the day, from the evening, all that good stuff. And then so fun. 23rd, you say we're going to do the next one? Because there's no way I'm doing a pod on the Sunday. Like there's no chance. Like we're... Because it's double game week, right? So we've got to we, we want to wait until nearer to the end of the game week to do something. Surely, so we're not going to review midweek. We shall have uh, an executive meeting in the Donington Grove Golf Club. Sounds good. But we're looking at like <laughs> the twenty third, right? Potentially. Yeah, yeah. So we're looking yeah. at like the twenty third um, to be a sort of a sp uh, um. More sort of Tottenham Spursy. focused, a Spursy, a Spursy podcast. More Tottenham focused, than more we Tottenham. Are. Um, and and what's even better is we're gonna we're gonna do it live at eight o'clock on Tuesday, the twenty third of April, 
during Arsenal Chelsea. So Spursy, you, you, so much Spurs, you would not believe it. We've got to test the audience. Test the audience. <laughs> Brilliant. As I say to everyone, um, thank you for joining us. Uh, as always, it's always a lot of fun doing these. Um, and we had a comment. I just wanted to just re- just to say about a comment that we had um, last week. I think it was, and it was just someone that just said, "Oh, what was the comment?" They were just so happy and so thankful that we did what we did. Um, uh, what was the comment? Well, as always, I've got, he- I got the uh, Harper X nineteen said, uh, "Brilliant these pods." Just two great mates having a laugh. A couple of classics about kick downhill and just duck. Don't take things too seriously, but cover each game in depth. Probably the best FPL pod. Yeah. And um, if anybody saw Lovely. that, I, anybody saw that I tactically put in. So when you, if you're listening on audio and you hear the I'm above average, I'm above average, that's supposed to be where the adverts go in, basically. And so if there's no adverts in there, then you've, you've, you've got no adverts. So happy for, happy for you. Um, but. I actually placed it where I was complaining about the fact that Tottenham's defenders and pl- players were all just small. And then it just goes, I'm above <laughs> average. I think a few weeks ago, I had one where the referees were, I said, I wonder what the referees were saying to each other when they were doing that VAR check. And it just went, I'm above average, which is brilliant. Your skills, um, mate. They never cease to amaze me. Throw those little tidbits in there for people. Um, but yeah couple of days till the deadline deadline is t- when is the deadline no idea 11 Saturday, o'clock 1 30 1 30 1 30 no 11 o'clock tottenham yeah 1 30 is the next 1 30 is game week 34 11 yeah. o'clock on saturday so don't miss that thank you as always for joining us thank you if you're listening on podcast uh thank you for joining us as well and um make sure you leave a review uh five stars would be fantastic it's been a long time since i've asked for that but yeah keep rating us on spotify keep rating us on apple um be much appreciated and if you want to come and support the podcast in another way you can come and join us on the discord at patreon.com forward slash above average fpl and um we're already discussing that the fact that all the summer will be free and then july will be chaotic as always yeah. but we're still going with the competitions at the moment so it's all good fun good chat so if you want to support us that way join us if you don't just hit the like and do that that'd be great anything else to add mate before we disappear come on rory come on rory I bet on I bet on Neiman. I need to back yeah, Neiman. We, we still want uh, top Rory, ten. So yeah, come on, Rory. Catch you guys later. See you later.